These glitters are amazing. I'm just, I couldn't be happier with this company. We absolutely love these cages. One, yeah. one at a time, okay guys? Hey guys, welcome to another Caternix Corner Live. Glad everyone could join us and I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, joining us tonight is Rebecca Lynch of Thieving Otter Farm. Um, she's going to be talking about quail photography, uh, how to get it right. Bunch of great information, guys, so stick around for this one. Welcome, Rebecca, by the way. Hi. <laughs> we've, been talking so, <laughs> we've been talking so long I forgot to welcome you. <laughs> Uh, but anyhow, before we get into it, um, as always, i got to jump into a few announcements. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors, Southwest Game Birds and Hatching Time. Uh, both these companies do a lot for the channel uh, by donating hatching eggs. Hatching Time donates a $50 gift certificate to be given away every week. Um, so much appreciated to both of them guys. Matter of fact, Hatching Time is going to be at some big event. I'm not sure exactly where it is. Rebecca, do you know anything about that? What's going on? Like a some kind of poultry show or something or uh, maybe there's a, I know there's a big show coming up in uh, Ohio is it the Ohio Nationals it could be is he, I think he said IIH or something like that yeah I'm not sure I don't know but anyhow if you guys are out there you know heading out to one of them shows check out Hatching Times Table uh, I saw the setup it's huge um, they got a lot of great stuff there um, Let's see, uh, shout out to our moderators. I don't know if they're in the house yet tonight, but Anna Poe from Dirty South Homestead and Amber McLernan. And uh, Amber's in the house. Welcome, Amber, and thanks for showing up tonight. I appreciate your help. Um, we are going to be doing some giveaways again tonight, guys. We had a, uh, a post over on Facebook uh, where you could comment on the post. And I selected uh, a couple names from that post. Uh, to win some hatching eggs and the $50 gift certificate. Uh, but Rebecca is going to be giving away a 30 count of her hatching eggs tonight, and she's going to select the winners. I'll let her tell you a little bit more about that here in a minute. Um, also, I just real quick want to mention about um, we have a uh, coaching mentorship program uh, that Michael Rose puts on over uh, the website is ccquail.com. Uh, Michael's been putting up some really interesting uh, information, um, stuff that if you're, you're serious about getting into quail or you're you know, seriously considering going professional with quail or commercial, um, this is definitely some information that will help you out. Uh, check that out. It's ccquail.com. Uh, the last post was a, a really good post, and uh, I enjoyed it. So I think all you guys would uh, enjoy it. So... Without any, we got quite a few people in here already. Uh, Rebecca, if you want to jump right into your presentation, we can do that. We're going to be talking about pictures tonight, guys. That's something I can't seem to do. Got my camera ready so we can <laughs> figure out how to do this. Um, but let me know what you want to do, uh, Rebecca, and we'll go ahead and get going. All right. Well, great. Um, let's see. I guess we need to change the screen over. Yep. Perfect. So this will be Quail Photography 101. Um, little disclaimer here, I am not a photographer, okay? I don't even play one on TV. So, um, <laughs> yeah, these are just some tips and, and hints and things that I have found that works for me. Um, and people seem to like my pictures, so uh, that's what I'm rolling with right here. Um, also, we're going to have a little fun uh, in the beginning. I'm, I'm going to be, uh, you know, kind of joking around and stuff like this. Do not take this personally. I'm not singling out anybody, so don't send me any hate mail, okay? <laughs> All right, so reasons to take pictures of quail. Um, there's a lot more than the ones on this list, but, you know, one of the big thing that we see uh, in the groups, in the in the Facebook groups or in uh, the uh, Caternix Corner community website uh, is color ID. You know, everybody's wanting to know what color is this? What pattern is this? Okay, so that would be a reason to take pictures of quail. Um, breeding. I take pictures of my quail um, and compare them to each other. And it allows me to, to sit and take my time and look over the bird from head to tail 
um, and, and compare one bird to another without the bird, you know, flapping its wings and being distracted by something. Um, marketing, you know, uh, you can use your pictures on websites, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, there is an online quail show, uh, coming up, uh, pips and chicks, uh, virtual poultry show is coming up. Um, so you might want to enter that. There's also next, uh, this coming February, there's a, um, a show in Australia for our Australian listeners. Um, there's a, a Facebook group dedicated to that, that you can join. Um, and you might want to take pictures for art or your own personal enjoyment. So I'm going to kind of touch on some of those. Um, and we're going to cover some do's and don'ts. Okay. Before you do that, Rebecca, um, yeah. I just want to say real quick, uh, if you guys have any questions for Rebecca, um, go ahead and post them in the chat room and make sure you type the letter Q by uh, your question. Uh, that way we can find it because I'm not reading all the questions tonight. So, uh, and Rebecca's got something she's got going on. So <laughs> go ahead and type the letter Q next to your question. Go ahead, Rebecca. Okay. Yeah, no problem. All right. Some quail photography do's and don'ts. All right. So this is uh, kind of, it applies to most situations with quail photography, but I'm going to be mostly focusing on color and sex ID marketing and show photography. Okay. So I took a photography class when I was in college. It was wildlife photography. And one of the things that uh, my one of my instruct instructors told me that has always stuck with me, I mean, like I graduated a long time ago, um, he said, don't take pictures with a potato. Meaning like if you're gonna take pictures, take them with a decent camera and take them with something, you know, a lens that is clean and in focus. Um, don't, don't, you know, whip out, uh, you know, a broken phone that is all, it has a scratched lens and try to take a picture. You see, this is a, you know, just, it's hard to tell what's going on with this bird. So do clean your lens and use a decent camera. So this is just an iPhone. Um, nothing, nothing special. I don't use, um, any big camera or anything like that. I'm just using my iPhone. Um, I do with my chickens sometimes break out a, a, a nice camera mainly because I want a nice zoom lens so I can take pictures of them from across the, the chicken pen. Don't take pictures of your quail in a mosh pit and expect us to do a color ID. So we get this all the time in the quail groups. People will say, you know, what, what color is that one? That's 14th from the left. And we're like, I, is that a quail? I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure. What is that? Do take pictures of an individual quail. So again, if you're wanting us to, to ID your bird, uh, color or pattern or sex or whatever, just show us one bird. Don't take pictures of your quail from across the yard and ask for an ID. <laughs> so again, uh, we, we have to be able to see your bird to ID it. Um, so while this is a cool picture of my outdoor aviary, it's really hard to tell what that one little bird is with the arrow. Do take close, clear pictures, uh, you know, of your bird, you know, nice and close so we can see what it is. Are you changing pictures? Because I'm still seeing the same one. Oh, no. What is going on here? Let's go back here. I'm seeing the, the black quail. Do take pictures. Um, yep, I've been changing, and I don't know what's going on. Let okay. me stop sharing and reshare. Okay. Let's try this again. All right, so... There we go. Now it's now it's catching up. There you go. Okay. Right, th right there is where you left there off. There we go. That's where we left off. Okay, so here is uh, the picture I mentioned from uh, across the yard, my little aviary. So you can see that we can barely even make out that that's a bird. We want nice, close pictures like this. So this would also be a good example of if you're um, doing photography for uh, the quail show. This is This is a nice profile picture. And I'll, I'll go over that in more detail. Don't take pictures of a quail that look like it fell into a plucker. Okay. Um, 
if you get on one of the groups and ask us what uh color and pattern that is um yeah we can't tell you do take pictures of nicely feathered birds don't take pictures in the dark so again kind of hard to tell what that is but we do get these pictures going hey what is this and we're like it might be a bird so this is going to start uh, a trend here do take pictures in bright shade okay so bright shade is best um and what i mean by bright shade is you know on, on a nice sunny day find a spot that is um that is shaded but not super dark shade if if that makes sense don't take don't take pictures of your hand so if you want us to id your bird we we kind of have to see it so do take pictures of a quail don't take pictures into the sun so you can see that this bird is kind of silhouetted and it's really hard to tell what color or pattern it is do take pictures in bright shade don't take photos at sunrise or sunset um sunrise and sunset gives you harsh lighting um that adds an orangish tint to uh to the bird so you can see this is at sunset and uh let me go back here this is what that red light looks like in bright shade so big difference okay so bright shade again don't take photos under a heat lamp just don't take them literally anywhere else <laughs> just <laughs> we can't tell anything and this is the same bird um don't take pictures with a messy background poop trays are not backdrops so you know especially if you're if you're doing photography for your website or for the quail show pay attention to what's in the background you you, you know you never know when there's uh you know poop trays or a kid picking their nose or or something just just pay attention so instead you want to use a, a simple appealing background preferably of a contrasting color so you see how this uh the the green grass and that little red leaf kind of make the black in this quail pop um so it's good to have something that that makes your birds stand out don't take pictures of your bird in broken light so you see here that uh part of this you know cage is casting a shadow across the bird if we're doing color and sex id it makes it a lot harder if if the light isn't consistent do take pictures of your quail in bright shade And don't take pictures of your quail indoors if possible. I know sometimes um, it's easier or, you know, you're just grabbing birds out of a cage or whatever. Um, but if you can, um, it, it's better to not take pictures of your birds inside. Uh, this is the same bird as many of the other pictures that you've seen. And you can see that it's hard to tell the exact color of it. And do, uh, you guys got this by now, <laughs> take your pictures in bright shade all right pop quiz and this is how i'm selecting the winners of tonight's giveaway for for a 30 count of my quail eggs uh we're going to do a little pop quiz there's two questions whoever's the first person to get both questions correct is the winner okay you guys ready all right each of these photos are of the same bird which lighting is best I'll give you guys some give you guys some time to take a look at it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of these. All I can see is Facebook user. But uh, yes, uh, the answer is B. 
Facebook user, whoever you are, we can't, I can't tell on my end of things, but you have it correct. All right. So here is the, uh, the next question of our pop quiz. Yeah, we can't, I can't see either who it is. Um, okay. Uh, the, for so those I of you who are watching on Facebook, you need to go up to the top of that, uh, screen and in the, uh, description of the video, there's a link. You need to click on that link, give Facebook permission to use your name. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to see who you are. So, And don't they got to get both of them right? So guys, yep. don't even answer until she asks the second question. Um, That's all right. So right now, I don't know who the Facebook war user is, but right, I don't Wolf either. Geist is in the, in the lead. If Wolf Geist gets this next uh, question correct, then... Uh, then, then Wolfgeist has the, the eggs. So, okay. which of these photos will make Rebecca give you stink eye? <laughs> so, let's see. Casey was the first one to get all and Casey also got B. So it looks like Casey Babson is the winner of the 30 count of, uh, of my eggs tonight. All right, so yeah, these, all of these will make, uh, will make me give you stink eye. Yep, don't, <laughs> don't, don't post these on Facebook. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so um, disclaimer. Now, I keep telling everybody to take their pictures um, in bright shade, but understand that if you use bright shade, there's a real chance you, your bird may fly or run away. Ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I, I do take a lot of my pictures. Um, that This right here that you see is a, is a uh, retaining wall. And uh, it's nice because I can set the birds at eye level and be able to, to take pictures of them. Um, and this is a lot of what I do. Uh, they go to run away. I pick them up. I turn them around. I put them back where I want them to be. They go to run away again. And after uh, several attempts, they finally give up and let me take their picture. Um, but there is a chance that if, if you're just setting your bird on a retaining wall, it, it may fly away. So be prepared to chase your bird. Hmm. Now, Kadia uh, is much smarter than I am. She uses a cage, um, a floorless cage, uh, to photograph her birds so they don't run away. So uh, I thank you, Kadia Galley, for uh, providing us with some uh, pictures for this presentation. That's a good idea. It's a fantastic idea. And she also uses a hat squished into a box with oh. some uh, nice little uh, flowers and herbs from the garden to be able to take pictures of her, her quail as well. And that's a good way to uh, secure the birds so they have a limited uh, escapability and uh, still make a cute little picture. So I love what she did there with the, the eggs and the, and the herbs. That's a, an adorable chick there. So you can also use a container. So um, with uh, with that little silky chick, I used a little a little. I don't even know what I found that cup in like Goodwill or something. Mm -hmm. um, and the the other picture is of a button quail next to a Caternix quail, and it's in a a wooden bowl that I found. Um, and the the wood grain makes a really nice uh, you know background for the photo, and also helps to keep the chicks contained. Okay. Uh, limiting mobility also helps. So this, uh, the picture on the left is that same retaining wall and there's just like a one rock that's jutted out. And for those quail that don't want to stand still on the top of the wall, if I make them stand on that little bitty piece of rock, there's not a whole lot of places they can go. They can still jump down and stuff, but they're thinking about, you know, their precarious situation and not really about getting away. Um, also, my hand works sometimes. Uh, if I just prop them up on my hand, you can see that retaining wall in the background that I use. Um, a lot of times they'll just sit there right in my hand while I take the picture. And if you need to, you can even kind of hold on to, to their feet with your thumb 
uh, to help again with those flighty birds that want to try to get away. And you can also use your hand to, you know, place in front of them or behind them or whichever way that they're trying to go to, to, you know, try to keep them from taking off um, and just crop out your hand later or, you know, uh, have your hand far enough away that it's not in the shot. So another helpful tip is to give them time to settle out of angry bird mode. You know, you've all seen this, the fluff feathers, the panting, the swearing, you know, could be both of you. Um, but if, if you're going to take pictures of your birds, it's, it's a lot better when they're calm and their feathers are nice and, and smooth versus the screaming angry bird here. You also want to take lots of pictures because you're if you take one or two, you're going to come back, you're going to look at your pictures and you're going to see that they're blurry or like this one with its wing hanging out or blinking, or there's a giant pile of poop under your bird. Take lots of pictures. Okay. Uh, because you're going to delete a lot. You know, everybody's like, Oh my God, how did you get that beautiful picture of your quail? If you take 200 pictures, at least one of them will be good. All right, so a big thing in any photography is to make sure the eye is in focus, okay? And with, if you're using an iPhone, you can simply touch the screen, um, you know, on the part that you want to focus on, and that'll help it focus. Um, but in any photography, you want the eye to be in focus. And you can see with both of these birds, immediately your eye is drawn to their eyes. Okay. Another helpful tip is to take your pictures at the same level as the bird. Um, all of these pictures that I've been showing you have been pretty much, you know, straight on the bird's level. If you're taking them at an angle or from the top, it, well, from the top, you might be looking at their back. But if you start taking them at weird angles, it's, it's not as pretty um, and not as easy to identify the bird. And I'm a little OCD. I will actually take my fingers and um, smooth out those feathers that are out of place. And if there's one that's just kind of sticking out in an odd angle, I, I have been known to kind of pluck those. Um, <laughs> so just, just one. Um, but yeah, uh, that can make a huge difference. You know, first thing, when I look at this bird, I'm drawn to that messiness. Um, so you want to, want to clean that up before you, you know, you know, take a bunch more pictures. And you can position the bird. So that the the bird um, on the left, well, they're both the same bird, but the, the picture on the left, that bird is all squatted down and its feet are spread apart and it, it kind of looks like a potato. Um, and that doesn't lend for a good picture. In the second picture, I just kind of gently placed my hand under its chest and, and lift it up and kind of positioned it a little bit. I've even taken my finger under their chin and, and lifted their chin a little. Um, you know, you can smooth their, their feathers down. You can put their wings kind of in place. Um, you can, you can um, do a lot in positioning once your bird calms down. All right, so using a light box. Now, this is where I'm definitely not a professional. Um, I, I have some tip tips and tricks, but, um, I would love to know how to, I, I always have trouble with the white balance. Um, there, there's always trouble with my background, not wanting to be white. So, uh, if any of you, um, you, you know, are schooled in using a light box, please, I would love to talk to you. All right, so what is a light box? Light box is, um, as you can see in the picture, a box with some lights in it and reflective material. Uh, lights up your subject. Um, pros is that your bird is contained. It's lit well. And you can take pictures no matter what time it is or what the weather is like. So if I wanted to take pictures of my bird on that retaining wall, well, it's dark and kind of rainy and cold. Uh, cons is that like I said, the, the lighting can be difficult to work with. Um, uh, maybe someday I'll figure out how to do that or one of you nice people will send me a message and, and school me on that. The other thing is poop. You, you cannot believe how much um, a, a quail can poop like every five seconds. 
uh, when you're working. So be prepared. Um, again, with the light, uh, photos may need to be edited a little bit with the white balance. Uh, so the picture on the right is an unedited photo and on the left is as close to, to possible, uh, as close to realistic as possible. Um, so when I, whenever I edit, I try to keep things true. And I think that people online can tell when you, when you go crazy with editing. And as I mentioned, poop happens, um, have a paper towel handy. I like to have a, a dry one and a wet one. <laughs> so, um, and I like to use surfaces that can be wiped clean, uh, or replaced, um, so in this picture, I'm using, um, a sheet of, uh, wallpaper. It's, it's like a single sheet of wallpaper that I got from Dollar Tree for a buck. They come in all different designs and, um, I can, you know, it's, it's got a, a smooth surface. It's kind of slick that I can clean off pretty easy and it makes for kind of a cute little, uh, background. So, um, Using different surfaces can yield different results. Um, and then, you know, when you're using different surfaces, you can see that sometimes whatever that surface is can reflect some color back in on the subject. So uh, this is another piece of that wallpaper I was talking about. Um, the next picture is yet another piece of wallpaper. The one on the right is a piece of silk. I got cheap at a, you know, I don't, I don't even remember. Um, You'll see on this picture, the, the one with the blue silk, the blue is reflecting up on the bird. So it's kind of changing the color of the bird. And in the next picture, I'm using some moss, some Spanish moss. Um, it, it's cute, but it also, you can see a little bit of green on the bottom of the bird as well. And again, here's some more pictures with different, uh, you know, silks that I'm using. Um, I do like to use these with the chicks when I'm taking pictures of chicks. Uh, I like, I don't like using the slick surfaces. Um, I don't, I don't like to risk them getting splay legs. So I do like for the, 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 excuse me, them to have something to stand on. All right, so here's some tips for uh, quail photography for color, sex, and ID. Um, all of uh, the, the previous rules that we talked about apply to this. So bright shade is still best. Um, and if you're wanting us to ID the, the bird, um, be it color or sex, we need to see parts of it. So if you're holding the bird like this, there's not a whole lot for us to go with. Um, so we need to be able to see the breast, the side of the head and the back. So here are some examples and on this bird, we can see the back of the bird and that's going to help us with pattern ID. And in the picture on the right, we can see the side of the head, which will help us determine male or female based on, uh, coloration and chin strap, um, as well as the breast and the same thing there. We're looking for coloration and certain patterns. And lighting makes a huge difference. Again, if you're using bright light, bright sunshine, um, you can see that's the same bird. That's bright sunshine versus bright shade. So big difference if you're asking us what color or pattern or if it's male or a female, uh, you know, how, how, where you take your picture makes a huge difference. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about the virtual poultry show. Um, so that's coming up soon. Um, entries will be opening uh, May 1st. And uh, this was really fun. Last year was the first one. Um, so I'm super glad um, that Bree is putting on another one. And so this format that you see here in this picture is how um, you need to be entering your, your photos. So you're gonna have a profile picture a, a picture of the breast and a wing spread picture. Okay. So for the profile photo, uh, it's going to be a side, uh, picture of this, uh, the side of the bird standing up naturally. Um, 
you can't um, have uh, any hands holding the birds into the pose. It's got to be standing naturally. It uh, should be taken on the same level as the bird, just like we talked about before. And um, the judge needs to be able to see all the parts of the bird. So nails, toes, beak, eye, tail, um, head, everything needs to be in the photo. So here's a good example. Um, the entire side of the bird is, is visible. The bird is bright and alert. Its eye is open. Um, the nails are nice and short. It's not panting. It's not all fluffed up doing the angry bird thing. Uh, this, this would be a good um, picture to enter. The only thing, if you really wanted to be picky, would be that leg is sticking out a little bit. It would be better if this bird's legs were up under it, um, standing in a more upright posture. Okay, so the frontal photo. Um, so this is a photo focusing on the front of the bird. Um, they're going to be looking at the face and, and breast featherings. Um, so the eyes, beak, feathers um, down to the breastbone should be visible. Um, and with this one, you can hold the bird if necessary. So here's a good example of that. Um, again, the bird is bright and alert. The eyes are open. It's not panting. Feathers are nice and smooth, nails are short, and the beak is at a proper length. Okay, and the wing spread photo. Um, this, they're looking at the back and the wings. Um, so you're going to want to have the wings fully spread, um, and each wingtip is going to need to be in the photo. Uh, the back should be easy to see. And uh, the photo should be taken above the bird. So, and they do allow hands to, to hold the bird uh, for this picture. So this is an example of hands holding the bird. Um, thank you, Tamara, for, for lending us the, this picture. Um, so she's holding this bird in one hand, using one hand to uh, spread the wings out and the other to hold the feet um, in the back out. So here's a couple more examples. Um, you can use the ground and that's easy. You know, if you don't have a helper, lay the bird on the ground and spread the wings out by hand, take the picture or um, there's my retaining wall again. <laughs> so I've got the bird basically hanging upside down and I use the, the wall to, to prop the wings open. All right, so some rules for the, the, uh, the quail show. Um, you want to use a simple background, um, just one bird per photo. Uh, you don't want to, you know, take a picture of three birds uh, when you're entering one. Um, make sure you have nice, clear, in focus pictures, bright shade, uh, no Photoshopping or editing at all. And you can't have any identifying marks or other identification. Um, make sure you, this is not a rule, but trim their nails. You know, don't have dragon claws. Um, position the bird, make it look nice. Okay. And, you know, a nice little hint, uh, if, if you really want your bird to look nice. And, you know, I know what a, a bird in a breeding cage can look like. Um, but if you want to enter one of those birds, it, you may want to condition it before the show. Um, just like, you know, if you were entering a chicken show or some other poultry, um, have a special cage that that bird is by itself. So it's not getting, um, over mated or picked on by somebody else and stuff, uh, allow those feathers to, to get nice and smooth. All right. I'm going to cover some artsy stuff as well. So zooming in. Um, this is where I'm going to derail from quail just a little bit because I thought these pictures were pretty. Um, but zooming in can uh, be nice and artsy and pretty. Uh, so I, I like to take nice close-ups of my birds. Um, even, you know, close pictures of their feathers can be really pretty. Zooming out. So this one by, you know, expanding the field of view a little bit, zooming out, I was able to get some of the, the pretty flowers in this field. Head tilts are awesome. So anytime you can get a picture of a bird um, or any other subjects, of course, we know it's adorable in dogs. Um, but anytime you can get a, a, a subject to tilt its head, that makes for a cute photo. 
Um, so one of the things that I do, um, I, I dog, own a dog boarding business. And when I'm taking pictures of people's dogs, um, I will squeak at them. So like that, or make funny little noises, clicking sounds, anything to kind of get them to cock their head and, and look at me cute, raise their ears. Um, so with the chickens, uh, you can try that as well. Uh, same with the quail. Quail aren't really into cocking their head. But as you can see with this one um, in the middle, you know, it's kind of got a little side eye going on, a little, little tilt, little, you know, head turn. That's cute as well. So another thing you can do is uh, experiment with taking photographs straight on or at different angles. So uh, the rooster in the first picture, um, that's not a typical picture you would see uh, of, of a rooster. Normally you see the side of their face or whatever, but this one looks kind of funny with his big poofy cheeks. Um, just kind of an interesting look. Uh, the quail in here with that, uh, you know, most people don't take head up you know, head on shots of their quail, but this one is kind of cute with his little, you know, side glance. Um, and of course the baby chick who could resist that. Props. So the cool thing with birds is they come with their own props. Eggs make great props. So if you're taking pictures, pictures of chicks, throw in some eggs. They, it always makes it adorable. Speaking of eggs, if you're taking pictures of eggs, you can use different things to try to make them pop as well. So uh, here are a couple of examples. I have like a, an old uh, wreath um, that was uh, made of burlap material. And I just took some quail eggs and stuck them on that. Uh, the, the wreath is hanging on an old uh, wooden door and it made for a nice photo. Um, the other one is, is just some glass I picked up out of a creek and arranged on a chair. Um, so, you know, this photo, uh, the, the type time of day with some shadows and stuff made it look a little extra cool. The other thing that I like when I'm doing some artsy stuff is curves. So I, these pictures speak to me. Um, I, I just like the, the symmetry and the curves of these, you know, I, I like the, it, I don't know. It's hard, hard to really explain. Um, just the, the curve of the birds is pretty to me. And humor. So, um, we've got my little angry bird here and <laughs> my silly duck who always has a feather in his nostril. So, you know, look for those things. Sometimes, you know, a feather in your bird's nose is something, you know, a picture that you might delete, but, you know, given the right moment, that is, you know, a very cute picture that could be used for different things. And one last thing I want to talk about is watermarks. Scammers are everywhere and they will steal your pictures. So it is very helpful to put a watermark on your photos to help prevent scamming. Um, it also helps to build brand recognition. Uh, if every time you post a photo, it's got your logo, uh, your farm logo or, or your name, whatever on it, people are going to start remembering that. They're going to start identifying your photos uh, as yours. Um, I, I know Katie out there, she, she can pick my pictures out uh, <laughs> anytime I post them. She doesn't even know, have to look to see who posts them because uh, my I kind of have a signature to my pictures. Um, but using that watermark um, really helps, you know, keep scammers away um, and uh, build your brand recognition. When you do use a watermark, it's good to put the watermark over part of, you know, overlap part of the subject. So it's harder for them to, um, crop it out. And, uh, special thanks to Terry for hosting tonight, Katia for lending us some pictures, Bree for, uh, the virtual show and Tamara for her, um, photo as well. And that's what I've got for you, Terry. Cool. Very good. All right. I appreciate that. I had a couple questions lined up for you and I can't remember what they are right now. I'm sure they'll <laughs> pop in my head again. 
Uh, it's about the light box. Remember I told you I, I built that light box and I was trying to use a green screen and then the, uh, the white background. Um, oh, no. I came up with some good ideas. What's wrong? Can you hear me? Carrie, yeah. I don't know if you can still hear me, but I've kind of lost you. I've frozen up. Um, go ahead and jump out and jump back in. I'll give you a second to see if it if it wakes up. <clears throat> okay, uh, while Rebecca calls back in, guys, I just want to say, um, go ahead and uh, go ahead and get your questions in. Type the letter Q next to your questions if you would, so it's easier for me to find it. Um, can you hear me okay now, Rebecca? I can. Sorry, okay. I froze up there for a minute. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it was, but no big deal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump back up to the top and see what we've got for questions. Sure. Um, I'm sorry I went so fast, guys, but I wanted to make sure that I left plenty of time for questions. Yep. No, that was perfect. You did good. Oh, I know what one of my questions was. How on earth do you? Because I use my cell phone a lot too for photos, but I got to use. I got to do it two-handed. You know what I mean? I, I can't take a. I can't hold the phone in one hand and guide the bird. And oh, uh, I'm very uncoordinated yeah, when it comes to that. I'm just able to hold my phone up and take the picture while holding my phone. Wow. See, I can't do that. I guess I'm not coordinated um, enough. <laughs> you could always, I do have like an iPhone, or I, I have a stand that will hold my phone. Um, and I even have like this one here. I can move it. Try not to blind here. Let me turn off the, so this one here. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm using to light this right now. Um, nice. You can set that up with your phone in the center and then use the light ring. All right. So that, that works as well. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got, I have several cameras. I've got the the one, it's a Panasonic GH4, and then I've got this this Sony, uh -huh. uh, A6300, I think it is. But I'm like you. I use my phone more than anything. So. Yeah, especially um, I like my phone because I can set it down really quickly um, when I'm taking a quail if I do need both hands to wrangle it. Right. Um, whereas if I'm using my really nice big digital camera, I would yep. be worried about throwing that down on my retaining wall. Exactly. Are you using like Photoshop or something to edit your photos? Um, honestly, I usually just use the, the part that's with the, the iPhone. I oh, really? To edit okay. and just kind of, yeah. All right, let's see what we got for questions here. Uh, Meep says, what show did you mention? My brain didn't process it. <laughs> that would be the, the Pips and Chicks Virtual Poultry Show. Okay. And then there also is another one that's going on in Australia. I don't know the name of it, but uh, if, if you're in Australia, ask about that. That's going on next month. Yeah, I saw the post today on that. I see a couple of good comments about my question using the phone. We'll get to it in a minute. All right. Now I'm looking forward to these uh, comments and stuff because I'm sure that they're, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not a professional, so right. I'm sure they'll have some, some good suggestions. I want to bring this one up. This was kind of like a, a general question, but um, I saw that photo that you had of that, uh, that feral rooster that was in the mm -hmm. center. Nice white chin strap and everything. Um, any updates about clean feral genetics? Do you know anybody that's got them yet? <laughs> I do not. It is a project that I'm going to start working on, but right now the black quail have all my attention. Uh, right. Once I release that, I'll be working on the, the clean barrel line. Okay. Uh, Mark says, Rebecca, I sent you an email the other day wanting black quail eggs. When are we going? When are they going to be available? Question, when will the black eggs be available? Okay. <laughs> Um, I will start uh, sending out uh, emails and messages to my waitlist mid-February. Um, and uh, once I fill my waitlist, they'll be open to the general public. 
Okay. Jeanne Farrell says, question, how do you deter predators with your outdoor aviary? Oh, that's a multi-step approach. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have a hardware cloth. Um, I use a, a dig barrier. So I took hardware cloth, um, four foot hardware cloth. I bent it in the middle. Half of it lays on top of the ground and half of it is, is attached to the side of the pen. And that way, if something tries to dig, they're gonna dig. They're gonna dig straight into hardware cloth, right. um, and the grass grows right up through it. You don't even see it. But there's a lot of people that bury wire. I don't. I don't have time for that. Right. Um, <laughs> or the arm strength. Um, electric fencing also is helpful. But so far, with just the the tin um, tin sides, hardware cloth, and the dig barrier, I haven't needed it. Hmm. Mine has a, a concrete floor. And then I put uh, cinder blocks all the way around it, and then I built up the uh, uh, the floor with like a deep deep uh, litter method awesome. that Katie use. Yeah, it works pretty good. Uh, Facebook user says some of your photos have an all white backdrop and look great and professional. Is this something you made, or how do you get that effect to them? So that was using a light box. Um, and honestly, you can buy a professional light box, whatever. I bought one for like 20 bucks on Amazon. So mm -hmm. that, that could be why sometimes I have trouble with the white balance as well. <laughs> uh, Terry, you were talking about making one. Did you, did you I did. have the chance to do that? I framed it out with uh, one by twos. And then I had a bunch of sailcloth left over for my sailboat projects. Uh -huh. And I, ju I just stapled that all around it and on the back. And you saw the bottom was wood, which I got to change that because it's it doesn't work. But it works good. I use a couple of them. Oh, they're not in here. A uh, couple regular photography lights, one on each side, kind of pointing down at an angle. Yeah. It lights everything up real good. But like you say, the birds poop all over that flooring. <laughs> it's going to take a while. I kind of like the idea of what you showed uh, Katia's photo where she put the hat in there. Yeah. Uh, that That's a good idea. I think I'm going to prop. I'm going to use the light box, but I'm going to set up props inside there. I think that, you know, that'll really make it easier to get the photos and still make for a nice photo. Absolutely. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, K Casey Babson says, I was ready to say bright shade, LOL. <laughs> Talking about that. When you first said bright shade, I'm like, wait a minute, bright shade. So you want... You want good lighting in a shaded area, correct? Yeah, yeah. You just don't. You there's a difference between if you start walking around outside, you'll see bright shade and dark shade. Yep. You know, like a garage, you're still outside, but that's dark shade. It's hard right. to see anything. Um, yeah. There's a yeah. Difference. I've noticed that too. In, in direct sunlight, it's just too harsh, casts too many shadows, and yep, I Absolutely. agree. Katie, you got the the question right. <laughs> okay, let me see here. I didn't realize there was that many people ask uh, or answered your questions. Yeah, I saw a lot of good answers there. Jennifer Tice says, what is the white background you use? So the white is actually what comes with the light box. Um, it's, it's a slick, um, like white panel. It, it kind of, kind of like, um, construction paper almost, okay. but, uh, slicker. Okay. It's, it's about that thickness. That's the flooring or that's the whole thing? Yeah, it, it, it actually goes, um, from the floor all the way up the back. So that way you don't have a corner at the bottom. Yeah. It, yep. It's kind of a, a curved surface. All right. Uh, Shane says, do you use any particular iPhone camera settings for quail photography? Uh, just the regular one. I have played around a little bit with, let me open it up and take a look. Um, on portrait, you can select between natural light and 
uh, let's see, what is it, studio light. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I'm using the light box, I'll try studio light. Okay. Um, never mind, my brain's <laughs> not thinking today. It, it, it's, it's coming up with stuff, but it's forgetting it as soon as I do, because uh, I was listening to what you said. And I see here uh, oh. Jeremy Westbury mentioned uh, that he likes poster board, so that would work as well for a, yep. a white background. Okay. I tried that with the, with the green. I got green poster board, and I ran it on the bottom of that light box up the back. But I had the I had the problem with the green spill getting on the on the feathers, so it didn't it. work out. No, my question was: Is that what you shoot in uh, portrait mode? Uh, sometimes, but I I honestly it, it just depends on um, if I'm doing outdoor. I just use whatever comes up, you know, first okay. on photo with with my you know phone. Um, gotcha. I usually use portrait mode if I'm um, using the light box. Okay. And then I'll, I'll switch it to the studio light. Gotcha. Uh, Jan says, question, do they have to be adult birds? Can chicks be used? Never done a poultry show before. I believe only adult birds. Okay. Green says, question, for the online bird show, can birds have leg bands on or do they need to be removed before the pictures are done? Um, I don't know for sure because uh, I am not uh, the, the judge, uh, a judge or the person putting on the show, but I believe like bands are fine. Okay. Uh, Thomas says, when did she say the next show is? Uh, entries start May 1st. Here's a good comment by Robert. It says, join a local camera club. They have lots of folks who will help out. I always told members of my classes to practice, practice, practice. Digital makes it easy. Awesome. Ray says, oops, uh, question. When you insert your watermark, do you use a program on your computer to do it, or do you have an app on your phone that you prefer to use? Um, I use an app on my phone. Um, I use one called Easy Watermark. It's uh, E, let's see, Easy Y Watermark. Is that a free app or? Yeah, there's a there's a light version which gives you pretty much everything you need. Okay. You need a pop socket. What's a pop socket? Yeah, you know, no idea. pop socket. I never heard of that. Oh, that's not one of those things that sticks on the back of the phone that you can hold it. Oh, that might be. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The little sticker thing that sticks on the back. Uh, Gunner's mate says, "What's the deal with the pure feral projects? Any updates? Shout out to Pips and Chicks." Um, as far as I, I honestly don't know anybody that's working on pure feral right now. Um, I did for the past year. Let me tell you, it is a hard project to <laughs> <laughs> unbelievably difficult. I know how hard it is, how hard it was to clean up the blacks. So, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to the challenge with the pharaohs. All right. Scara says, Terry set a timer for it to take the picture. That helps me a lot so I don't have to worry about snapping the picture and maneuvering the bird. Good idea. It's a good idea. There's another one. Robert says, Terry, you should be able to set up your camera with a remote release switch. That helps a lot. Sarah says, Rebecca, this has been fabulous. Thank you for this. Absolutely. Awesome. Wow. I didn't know this. Victoria says, not sure about iPhone, but Androids have a verbal say cheese command to take pics. That's awesome. I've never heard of that. Uh, Scar says, question, do your black quail carry the blue egg gene? Mine do not. Katia says, great presentation, fantastic tips. I'm sure I'll be sharing the link for this episode a lot. Um, what I might do, guys, just to make it easier, if it's all right with uh, Rebecca, I may just cut out that section of your presentation and post that as a standalone video. Sure. That way they don't have to watch the whole live stream to, you know, to get the info they want. <clears throat> okay, here's... 
Facebook user says, if you're determined to get a consistent white balance, especially in something like a light box, you will want to use a gray card. You can use a medium to light gray paint chip and place it in the photo. You'll want to use an editing program to remove the gray card from the photo or take a picture of the gray card first, then remove it and take a picture of your birds. Then when editing, open the gray card image first, sample that image, balance, and apply to all others. Hope that helps. Okay. Awesome. Technical white balancing. <laughs> uh, David says, question, what photo settings did you use to get the bird so sharp and the little flowers out of focus? Um, I'm guessing that's the one with the, the bird in the distance and there was lots of flowers. Um, I think so. Yeah, I was, uh, I typically, that, that would be with my big, uh, my <clears throat> bigger camera. Um, yep. And uh, honestly, when I'm taking pictures of my chickens, I usually have it on the, uh, I don't know, whichever setting is for the, the like sport setting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, probably a setting for um, uh, like portrait would probably be better. Um, and I'm sure there's different lenses, but I'm not a professional photographer. Yeah. No, I think they call that bouquet. And what you can do to get that is stand back from your subject, zoom in on the subject, and then everything around the bird will be out of focus. The subject will be in focus, but everything beyond that won't be. Right. Um, Jennifer says, questions, which incubator do you recommend for quail eggs? And any tips for incubation when we purchase eggs from you? Um, well, it depends on how many eggs you plan on hatching. Um, Terry, you like for smaller incubators, you like the Burrado the Burrados, and yep. uh, Brinzi, right? I don't have the Brinzi. Um, I have the Burrado Lumia 16 and the bigger one, the, the Real 49. Uh, those okay. are the ones that I use for smaller sets. Otherwise, I use my hatching time uh, cabinet incubator got it yeah i know the the one that you, you probably people will recommend to you but you want to stay away from would be the the nurture right 360. um you you did a review on that right I Terry? Did, yes yeah and it wasn't it wasn't a very good review but it was an honest review so <laughs> yep and for for tips um i'll be including a, uh, a little handout sheet with the, with the eggs to, to give you some good tips on catching. Here's a, a little tip from Scara. When taking photos of birds, I run a fishing line through their leg bands to use as a leash. You can also stake the fishing line down so you can move around the bird. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's a good idea. As long as the bird doesn't panic, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> okay, we answered that one. Amber says, I'm using the coaching program to help try for pure pharaohs. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Yep. Have to keep us updated. Oh, yeah, this is something, too, I want to know more about. Um, tell me more about the monthly subscriptions to the eggs of the month. Sounds interesting. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I decided to try something new um, and uh, offer subscriptions for hatching eggs. Um, you have two choices. You can either get um, uh, just assorted, uh, kind of hen's choice, or you can do hatchery choice, and I'll try to send you either all of one, all, all of one flavor of bird, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> like a collection. So uh, right now I'm sending out the fee collection, and people that choose hatchery choice are getting pearl fee, fall fee, um, and sparkly fee. Um, and then I try to do something different each, you know, each time you get your order and you can choose how often you, you get your subscription. So some people said that monthly would be, uh, too much for them. Um, and so I have monthly, quarterly, uh, three times a year and twice a year. So cool. you can, you can choose how often and there's a, a little discount applied for signing up for this subscription. Nice. It's a yeah. good idea. Gunner's Mate. Uh, Gunner's Mate says, any recommendations as far as interior lighting shots? Um, honestly, 
I would say using something like uh, the light ring that I showed <coughs> earlier um, may help, um, but I don't do a whole lot of interior shots. All right, and I'm having the same problem with that light box I built because I've only got two. They're just photography lights, but on stands, mm -hmm. and it, it's not lighting the entire um, box. You know, I'm not getting the I'm not getting even light all the way throughout the box. Right. The, the one the one that you have how is that lit uh there's a, a ring of uh diffuse lights at the top of the box oh, okay so i think if i if i used my little light ring thing in front of the box as well that that would probably help too okay uh facebook user says i seem to be getting a lot of hens on my last three hatches any insight on how to keep a more consistent hatch. Oh, I was about to say go play the lottery. That's good. <laughs> odds. I wish I hens? got I wish I got heavy hens in my hatches. I did I, I, it's just luck. Yeah. Just I did on my last Fab Fee I hatched out I think thirty something birds. I got two roosters. So unbelievably awesome. I couldn't here I am hunting for roosters and uh, I don't have yeah, I got the other way last time I hatched out a batch um, I, I ordered some eggs from uh, Southwest game birds and yep. I got some pansies and calico fee and uh, with my calico fee I got um, two hens and like 13 roosters <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see Silver Fox has just got in, coming in from Southwest Missouri. Thank you both. Just got a box from Thieving Otter Farms last week. What do you think the price and time for the black quail will be? I will start offering the black quail uh, middle of next month to my wait list. Um, and once I work through the wait list, then I'll start offering it to the general public through the website. Uh, if you want to get on my wait list, um, you can contact me uh, Thieving Otter Farm at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. And Steel, Stills and Squeals Barbecue says light boxes require three lights, top and both sides. Okay, I did not know that. All right, that brings us down to the bottom of our questions. Boy, this timing worked out just about perfect. Perfect. Because I still got to go clean cages tonight. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, if, if anybody else has any more questions, go ahead and get them in. Um, I'm going to. Uh, read the winners of uh, the hatching eggs from Southwest Game Birds and the $50 gift certificate from uh, Hatching Time. And uh, we'll come back to, if there's any more questions, we'll come back to that. Um, for the people that I call your name, I need you to uh, email me your shipping information to terry at caternixcorner.com. Amber, if you could put that in there, I would appreciate it. Uh, make sure I get a, obviously a good uh, address, but I also need your email and your phone number. Um, so the hatching time gift certificates going to Logan Jordan and the uh, Southwest Game Birds, a 30 count of hatchery choice is going to Dave Bringleson. I hope I said that right. Um, yeah, I need you guys to make sure that you do email me because I'm not going to go hunting for you to let you know that you won. Um, so make sure I get your information. Uh, Casey, do you want Casey Babson to send you the information or to me and I'll forward to you? Or Either one is fine. Uh, my uh, email address, Amber, Amber put that in the chat so she can uh, reach out to me that way. Perfect. That'll work. Okay, Facebook user says, how about the price of eating eggs? Do you have um, I am not currently selling any eating eggs. Okay. Just, uh, that's something I'm going to be getting into. Um, I'm uh, expanding my quail area, and once I do, I'll be offering those as well. Cool. see I think that's about it we got a whole bunch of congrats to the winners uh, Casey says I'm on the website I can message you there if you like uh, if you're talking about the Caternix Corner website that'll work just fine um, okay brings us down to the bottom of the list uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, joining us tonight 
Um, I do want to say real quick, guys, um, I've been having some health issues um, the past couple weeks, and I'm going to be spending the next few weeks, i got a whole bunch of testing that needs to be done, so I'm not going to, well, I can't say I'm not, but I'm probably not going to be uh, worried about getting live streams, you know, set up with uh, guests and whatnot. Um, Klaus was supposed to join us next week but he got called back to work and he's unable to make it so um, I'm just going to put a hold on some of this stuff until I get my health straightened out nothing serious but well it could be serious but um, anyhow um, so if if you don't hear a lot out of me you know the reason um, again thanks for everybody for joining us Rebecca thank you so much for uh, the presentation tonight and taking thank the time you. to join us absolutely welcome back anytime so guys have a, uh, a great night, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>